2000. 4. gada 29. martā Latvija pievienojās NATO. Līdz ar to 2024. gads iezīmē būtiski notikumu Latvijas dalības NATO 20 gadi. Ir apritējuši 20 gadi kopš Latvija ir kļuvusi par pasaulē spēcīgākās militārās aliances dalību valsti. Notikums, kas nesis drošības garantijas un sniedzis ieguldījumu mūsu militāro spēju attīstībā. Un lai pārunātu NATO austrumu flanga stiprināšanu un gatavošanos NATO samitam Vašingtonā, kā arī atbalstu Ukrainai un Ukrainas integrāciju NATO, valsts prezidents Edgars Rinkēvičs Rīgas pilī jau vakar tikās ar NATO militārās komitejas priekšsādātāju admirāli Robu Bauveru. Un Robs Bauveru šorīt ir mums pievienojies uz interviju. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and uh, very warm welcome. And thank you very much for being with us uh, this morning here. Uh, we just uh, mentioned that uh, Latvia joined uh, NATO 20 years ago, an event uh, affecting the security and defense of our country. NATO as our security guarantee in day-to-day -day terms and uh, also strategically has anything and what has a change in NATO's settings, goals and tasks now? Uh, there's, there's a lot of change. And actually, uh, uh, the big change started after the annexation of Crimea in 2014. And then, uh, uh, let's say, since that time, we started to rethink the position of, uh, of Russia. Russia. We tried to work with Russia for 20 years as a partner. And uh, since 2008, uh, when they invaded Georgia, 2014, the annexation of Crimea, 2022, the full-fledged invasion of, of Ukraine. And uh, as a result of all these events, uh, we started to look at Russia more and more as a threat. And as a result, we have changed our military plans. Uh, they were in, uh, uh, approved in Vilnius. And as a result, uh, we are now changing um, the military uh, in, in all five domains, which is land, maritime, air, space and cyber. Uh, to make sure that we are ready to, uh, to deter and defend uh, the Russian threat and the terrorist groups. Uh, so that is ongoing and we need more forces at higher readiness. We need more capabilities, things like air defense. We need uh, uh, new command and control arrangements and we need more and better training. So that is all happening now since the Vilnius uh, summit. So we're making these plans executable, as we say, and that is ongoing. But it is the result of the Russian behavior. Yeah, you already mentioned that currently basically all the planning documents mention the two most important threats to the members and citizens of the NATO alliance. It's Russian aggression and international terrorism. Uh, the presence of the allies and strengthening the, of the security in local and also regional terms. What is it based on now? Uh the threat basically is all around us. So a lot of people talk about the eastern flank as the threat. And in the eastern flank, we have strengthened our presence. So uh, the, the, the original enhanced forward presence uh, battle groups in the three Baltic nations, including Latvia, here is 11 nations under the leadership of Canada uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Latvia. <coughs> so the three Baltic states, Poland, were the first battle groups in, uh, in, in, in NATO along the eastern flank. Since 2022, since the invasion, we changed that and we increased the presence in the southeast as well, uh, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania and Bulgaria. So we now have eight battle groups along the eastern flank. And these battle groups have uh, the size of a, a battalion and we can uh, make them bigger into a brigade if uh, intelligence uh, uh, makes that necessary. So that is what we have done as a result of basically the invasion uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Ukraine. Then uh, we have to understand that the Russians are also in the high north, in the Arctic. They are at the Atlantic Ocean, in the west of NATO. They are in the south, in Africa. They are in the Mediterranean and in the Black Sea. So NATO will always uh, look 360 degrees, uh, because if you only focus on one point, and your adversary goes somewhere else because he knows you're only looking at this one point, mm -hmm. you actually make yourself not stronger. So uh, you have to be uh, vigilant around you to make sure you understand the whole picture and then uh, you're able to respond whenever that's necessary. If we speak about the war in Ukraine, how much uh, can NATO help Ukraine and its fight against uh, the aggressor? Uh, what has happened after the start of the full-fledged invasion in Ukraine? Because, of course, the war already was happening since 2014, so the war was already 
uh, for eight years when the full-fledged invasion took place. Fifty nations help Ukraine on a daily basis. Uh, and that is not only NATO. So, of course, NATO is 32 nations now, uh, but uh, there's 18 nations more that help Ukraine as well, with lethal aid, weapons, ammunition, non-lethal aid, and money. And that is, uh, that is ongoing. A lot of, uh, uh, all of the NATO nations do that uh, in one form or the other. So uh, the alliance helps with non-lethal aid, <coughs> and uh, the, uh, uh, the other nations do other things. So that is ongoing. We need to continue to do it. I mm -hmm. visited uh, Kiev last week. Uh, that was the first military delegation since the full-fledged invasion of NATO. Uh, an impressive uh, <coughs> visit. Uh, I met President Zelensky. I met uh, a number of other politicians. And, of course, the commander uh, of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, General Sersky. Uh, it is clear that Ukraine needs our continued uh, help. Uh, it is difficult at the front, uh, but not only Ukraine has, uh, has mm -hmm. a difficult time. The Russians have a difficult time as well. I mean, Ukraine took back 50% of what they originally gained in the spring of 2022. They have suffered 350,000 soldiers killed or wounded. The Ukrainians are, uh, were able to push back the, the Russian Black Fleet Navy from Sevastopol to the other side of, the, of Crimea. <clears throat> and as a result, we're able to create a grain corridor uh, to export grain from uh, Odessa to, uh, to the rest of the world without an agreement of Russia. 1.3 uh, smart young Russians left the country since the war. So the Russians are not in a good place either. But mm -hmm. the war <clears throat> is difficult and has its toll on both nations. Mm -hmm. What guarantees did you promise uh, to Ukraine when you met President Zelensky? Did he um, uh, wait for some guarantees or promises from you? Uh, a military leader will never bring that kind of promises because it is, uh, uh, it is of course, first and foremost in the political realm when, uh, when we are talking about these kind of promises. Uh, but, uh, uh, and that will be the discussions towards Washington. What is uh, uh, the tra trajectory towards Washington in terms of... Uh, and as the Secretary General said, uh, Mr. Stoltenberg, it's not a question of if uh, Ukraine will become a member, but when. And the discussion on those condi conditions is, is, is a political one and will be, uh, will be done uh, leading up to, to Washington. Some weeks ago, as I remember correctly, uh, Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, surprised, I would like to say, NATO partners by announcing that it is not excluded that a NATO country could send its soldiers to, to Ukraine to prevent Russia from winning this war. Uh, this was followed by a series of statements uh, that NATO had no <coughs> such intention. However, under what kind of scenario uh, actually this could happen? Uh, scenario, uh, uh, the advantage of scenarios is that you can think about everything, of course. But uh, uh, and what the situation is at the moment, there's no uh, NATO forces under, uh, under NATO command. There's no military forces under NATO command in Ukraine at the moment. And there's no plans for that. So uh, the, 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 the remarks of President Macron uh, might lead to whatever if all the nations in NATO agree to that. But uh, there's no plans to do that, and, uh, and there's no uh, military forces under NATO command at the moment in Ukraine. But uh, a few days ago, we saw in the headlines that uh, Russia missile briefly entered Polish airspace. Uh, by the way, a Russian spy plane was also spotted near Latvian airspace on Monday. What does this say about Russia and its actions? Is it provocation or something more? Uh, unfortunately, we've seen this before, that uh, Russian uh, missiles entered uh, Polish airspace. Uh, and then turned uh, and went basically back uh, to, uh, to, to, to Ukraine. Um, it, is, it is not clear, entirely clear, whether this is intentionally or whether this is a mistake by an operator. Um, so uh, I, I know that the Polish government talked to or wanted to talk to the, uh, to the Russian ambassador in, in Warsaw to, uh, to discuss this incident. Uh, we've seen drones very close and sometimes in Romania. Uh, so uh, this is, of course, the concern that uh, when war is close to our borders, then incidents might happen. And uh, uh, that's why it is important to have the military-to-military -military discussions on the highest level between NATO and Russia, which unfortunately hasn't been possible 
for the whole period that I'm in, in this job, since June uh, 2021. Every uh, effort that, we, that I made to reach out to General Gerasimov to make sure that we can deconflict if such a thing happens. You want to be able to pick up the phone and to ask them, is this an incident or was this on purpose? Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not in contact like that, and that is very unfortunate. As we know, Russia is a nuclear weapons state. Uh, is the nuclear threat uh, real and present? What is the view of the NATO? Uh, NATO is a nuclear alliance, and therefore uh, we will always look uh, if, if, if Russia, as I said, is, is our main threat, of course, there is the discussion on nuclear as well. The good news, despite all the rhetoric from Russia, is that uh, uh, whatever the Russians have done in the last two years uh, with regard to nuclear has not forced us to change our posture with, uh, uh, with nuclear weapons in NATO. So that is the good news. For now, it is, uh, it is only rhetoric. Another important question, I think every citizen in Latvia know what the NATO fifth article say and declare. Uh, would it be initiated if a critical moment was to be reached? Uh, what would it mean for Latvia? For every state in the alliance that is attacked, Article 5 will be evoked. That is a, that is a fact. And uh, it doesn't require discussion. Sometimes people think that you actually need a discussion for Article 5, but that is not the case. It is, it is evoked immediately in case of an attack. Uh, and uh, so it, uh, uh, they're, they're I think the mistake maybe is that when uh, Article 5 was evoked um, for the 9-11 attack, that was a number of weeks after it, but it was not the result of a request from the United States. It was a, a result of a, uh, of a very uh, important um, let's say, a step from the alliance to show the United States the solidarity from, from the alliance as a whole. Uh, but it was not the result of a request, and it doesn't take weeks uh, for Article 5 to be evoked. It is in accordance with the treaty immediately. At the beginning of the interview, you just mentioned that uh, actually a lot has changed. You also mentioned this uh, Vilnius summit and also the, the serious and strong decisions that made there. The next NATO summit uh, will be held in Washington, D.C., United States, uh, this July, from 9 till uh, to, um, 11 July. Uh, how is NATO preparing for this summit? What will be the main questions, how would you say, and what to expect from the summit, actually? Um, one of the things that we will look at is... Um, let's say, how far are we with the executability of all these plans I talked about? Because it is not a light switch. It is not, uh, if after the decision of all these military plans, you're, you're not immediately there. You need to, you know, you need to grow the forces. You need to buy all the capabilities. You need to buy the ammunition, need to organize training. So it will take some time before we are where we need to be. That is one. And we will take stock, so to say, in Washington on, uh, on where we are with regard to these, to these, to these military plans. That's, part of, uh, that's an important part of the discussions. Uh, another one uh, will definitely be Ukraine on, uh, with regard to the membership. Uh, 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 so, and and that, is, that is a very political discussion, of course. Uh, but, but, but that is certainly one of the points that, that will be discussed. Uh, and, and we will focus uh, on making sure that Ukraine is ready when uh, all the conditions are met and the Allies uh, agree to their accession. So it is, uh, it is uh, very much what, are, what can we do practically to make sure that they are ready for that moment. Uh, that is uh, the second point. And another one is that we've seen, of course, in terms of the attacks uh, and the war in Ukraine, that integrated air and missile defense is a very important uh, uh, part of the defense of the Alliance. Uh, and that is one that will uh, basically ask for uh, uh, specific attention from all the nations because of uh, the, the enormous amount of money that is involved and the fact that we need, um, in general, but, in, but also with the air defense, uh, and to increase our defense uh, production capacity in, 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 in the alliance. Because we've seen that for uh, the last 30 years, the industries and the liberal economies in our part of the world focused very much on just, uh, uh, just in time, just enough. And with the pandemic in the medical, we saw it was not good enough if there is a, a, a huge uh, crisis in the, in, uh, like a pandemic. But of course, in war, that's the same. 
then stocks, both in the medical and in the military, stocks are important. Uh, stocks in this just enough, just in time was not a smart thing because it's dead money, stocks. But actually in a war and in a medical pandemic, then uh, stocks save lives. So we need to work on our uh, uh, defense uh, industry production capacity. We need to ramp it up. It requires not only uh, more contracts from the governments to the defense industry, but also the financial world to, 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 be, to, become, uh, to, to be convinced to invest more in the defense industry. So all these things will be on the table in, in Washington. And in conclusion, we celebrate Latvia's 20, NATO's in, uh, 20 years in NATO these days, and we hear a lot of people saying, thank God we are in NATO. But uh, how would you say, uh, what kind of partner is Latvia for NATO? Because we all always think we are a small country, what can we give? How would you say, what can we give? Well, uh, it's not only what can you give, it's actually what you give. So uh, Latvia is a very important partner for NATO. Um, uh, Latvia is investing heavily in its armed forces. Uh, it's more than 2.3% uh, at the moment. Uh, so it's not only the size, but it is what you do compared to your size. That is, that is what uh, NATO looks at. Uh, so it is the, the, con the, the, the participation in operations over the last 20 years it is, uh, that have been considerable. It is uh, uh, the, the way you support Ukraine that is uh, c very commendable. And uh, I think Latvia is one of the nations, if you compare it to your GDP, that uh, does, uh, does the most. Uh, one of the nations that is do doing a, a lot when you compare it to your GDP. So all these things uh, uh, is, is, is a showcase for, for a lot of nations in NATO to see how serious you are as a member. And, uh, uh, and, and other nations take Latvia serious because the 11 nations that are here for the battle group show that the solidarity is, is, uh, is, is very great and that uh, uh, the nations take uh, the security of the Baltic states and Latvia in particular uh, very seriously. So congratulations <laughs> on your 20 years in NATO. Thank you. And, uh, that's Thank it. Thank you very much for these words. And of course, we will follow the events uh, till the summit and also these decisions that you that you mentioned uh, before. And uh, we really thank you again one more time for being with us this morning here. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you very much. Have a nice time in Latvia. Thank you.